In this video, I'll be talking on some characterization of congruences and we'll also look at the basic properties of the congruences. And let's look at the first theorem that says for arbitrary integers a and b, a is congruent to b modulo n if and only if a and b leaves the same non-negative remainder when divided by n. So now let us do the proof. So I will first assume that a is congruent to b modulo n and then we'll show that the remainder is same. So let me to assume that assuming that a is congruent to b modulo n and by the definition we say that n divides a minus b by the definition of the congruence so this implies that a is equal to b plus k n for some k belonging to integers and now we want to show that the remainder is same when they are divided by n so let us assume that that on division on division b leaves a certain remainder as r so b leaves certain remainder r when divided by n so when divided by n so in case we have selected that b leaves the remainder r so the same remainder i must get as a result that when n divides a so i should get the same remainder as r now let's see that that means b is equal to q n plus r and of course r lies between this range and now obviously from the previous expression that we have a is equal to b plus k n so i can write this as a is equal to b plus k times n so substitute the value for b this is q n plus r plus k n this is same as q plus k times n plus r and you can see that now look at this expression a is equal to q plus k times n plus r so this means n is a multiple of this expression that is q plus k plus r so the remainder is r only so that means this is same as when this a is divisible by n we leave the remainder r so this implies that a and b leaves the same remainder this leaves same non-negative remainder when divided by n so when divided by n so when they divided by n they leave same remainder and hence this satisfy our one way result that this way we have proved now we prove the other way side and for the other way side we assume that they leave the same remainder so suppose that a is equal to q1 n plus r and the same way i can assume b is some quotient q2 n plus r because the remainder has to be same so we take the same quantity r and of course r lies between the same range it lies between 0 and n and 0 is including the equality also now i want to show what we need to show is that a is congruent to b modulo and this is what we need to show so this means we just need to find what is the expression for a minus b this is q1 n plus r minus q2 n plus r you can see that r are get cancelled so this is q1 minus q2 times n and this is left hand side is a minus b so this means a minus b is a multiple of n so from here we can see that n divides a minus b and if n divides a minus b i can use the definition of the congruence and i can write this as a is congruent to b modulo n and hence our result hold theorem 2 says let n is greater than 1 be fixed and a b c d belong to integer then the following property hold first a is congruent to a modulo n and the second property says that if a is congruent to b modulo n then b is congruent to a modulo n third it says that if a is congruent to b and b is congruent to c then a is also congruent to c modulo n in fact if we club these three so congruence is an equivalence relation so we can say that congruence is an equivalence relation so now let us prove that this is equivalence relation but before that let's also look at the other properties and in the fourth property it says that if we have two congruence a is congruent to b modulo n and c is congruent to d modulo n then we can add these to one and we can also multiply these two congruences if they are with the same moduli condition in the fifth property if a is congruent to b modulo n then we can add the same quantity c on both side or we can multiply by c on uh, both side and if a is congruent to b modulo n then we can raise the power so you can see that a raised to per k is congruent to b raised to per k for positive integer k and this immediately follows from the previous properties so now let's prove this first one two three property which satisfy that it is an equivalence relation so in the first case as we said that a is congruent to a modulo n which is true 
by the definition itself this is true because we say that n divides a minus a or we may say n divides 0 that is true that is trivially true because every number divides 0 the second property we want to show that if a is congruent to b modulo n if this is holding then we need to prove that b is congruent to a modulo n and in this case also you can see that if a is congruent to b modulo n that means n divides a minus b so you can take a negative sign common from here so this means n divides minus of b minus a this is true so this means from here we say that n divides b minus a so if n divides b minus a it also divides the negative of this so they both hold and in the third property we want to show that if a is congruent to b modulo n and here we say that b is congruent to c modulo n then we want to show that a is congruent to c modulo n this is what we need to prove so from here we can say that n divides a minus b or i can write that a minus b is some k times n we can write it as k1 times n for k1 belongs to integer and here when i say that n uh, b is congruent to c modulo n so i say n uh, divides b minus c so this means b minus c is some k2 times n and now for this expression what i need is n divides a minus c or i have written a minus c is n times some expression k3 so now by from these two expression if i simply add these two one so let's see this if you add these two one expression so this gives me a minus b plus b minus c so that is the left hand side and the right hand side is k1n plus k2n and so this means b we get cancel out so this become a minus c and if i take k1 plus k2 times n so let's this call let's call this one as k3 so now you can see that this holds so this hold true and hence we say that our result hold true so we can say this is congruence is an equivalence relation so with these three property we prove that congress is an equivalence relation and now we want to prove the fourth property which said that if a is congruent to b modulo n and c is congruent to d modulo n so we want to add so what we need to prove is then a plus c is congruent to b plus d modulo n so this is one thing that we want to prove and we also want to prove that a c is congruent to b d modulo n so now let's take again from the given condition we say that a minus b is some k1 times n and from the other condition we get c minus d is k2 times n we want to get a plus c so this means a plus c minus b plus d so this is what we desire to have so this is same as a minus b plus c minus d and that is same as k1n plus k2n and this is same as k1 plus k2 times n so that means we can say that a plus c is congruent to b plus d modulo n so this holds true and now let's prove for this case ac is congruent to bd so in this case i want a product so let's see what is the product ac so when i want an ac product so this means now take this b on the other side and from here take this d on the other side so now from this expression when you take b and d on the other side and then we multiply a and c we get b plus k1 times n and here we get d plus k2 times n and this becomes bd plus b times k2 plus d times k1 plus k1 k2 n and we have n here so now you can see that we got ac minus bd this is equal to this expression so this expression multiply by n so that means ac is congruent to bd modulo n and that also hold over the second condition and now we want to prove the fifth condition and the fifth condition also the similar result will follow we have a minus b is some k1 times n and now because we want to get a plus c and b plus c so that means just add c on both sides so we have a plus c minus b plus c this is same as k1 times n so we can write down this as a plus c is congruent to b plus c modulo n so i have just added and subtracted c on both sides so that holds the first condition now to get ac and bc so let's multiply now from here 
this expression the previous expression can also be written as a is equal to b plus k1 into n and now multiply c on both sides so we get a c is equal to b c plus k1 n into c and now i can write this as b c plus k1 c times n so from here we can again see that a c is congruent to b c modulo n so this also hold the second condition or we can also note it down that c is always congruent to c modulo n so in that case we can use a fourth property to establish the result because in the previous case we have said that whenever a is congruent to b modulo n and there is another congruence c which uh, there is another congruence which is also given so now we can add these two or we can multiply these two so even by the fourth property by using this concept and using the fourth property we can get these two results now in the last property a is congruent to b modulo n then i want to show that a raised to power k is congruent to b raised to power k modulo n and this is true because we can say that a is congruent to b modulo n so whenever uh, this k is equal to 1 this holds now we want to increase the power so let's take if we take k is equal to 2 so this means it is a square congruent to b square modulo n so as this holds so let's repeat this congress a is congruent to a a is congruent to b modulo n and from the previous result we can always multiply this congress a multiply by a and b we can multiply by b so we can get that a square is congruent to b square modulo n so now applying the previous step again and again we can reach to a to the power k is congruent to b to the power k modulo n or we can use the mathematical induction so you can use the mathematical inductions to apply the result so when we use the mathematical induction in that case for the result k is equal to 1 this is true a is congruent to b modulo n this is absolutely true we will assume the result is true for k that means a raised to power k is congruent to b raised to power k modulo n and now to get the result for k plus 1 by the fourth result we can multiply so this is a raised to power k plus 1 this is congruent to b raised to power k plus 1 modulo n n and hence the result is true for all k which is belonging to positive integers